okay good morning everybody uh, in the last class uh, we are discussing about uh, how to write programs for uh, finding out the fibonacci series how to find the factorial of a given number then uh, we have discussed about how to write a program for <clears throat> arranging the numbers either in ascending order or uh, descending order then also we have discussed about how to write a program for finding the uh, largest or a smallest number in a uh, set of numbers okay. so <clears throat> uh, today uh, we'll start our discussion okay so the learning outcome for today's class will be what we need to understand how to calculate the delay and also we need to uh, able to write the program for calculating the delay then second important uh, thing is uh, we need to understand the functioning of what how to interface a switch and led to the microcontroller because as we all know that uh, um input devices and output devices are very very important part of microcontroller so uh, we need to know how to interface these input and output devices to the microcontroller and also uh, we need to know how to write program uh, for interfacing a simple switch and uh, led to the uh, microcontroller so these are the learning outcome for uh, today's class okay so before getting into how to write a program for calculating the delay let us get into the uh, theoretical details for uh, calculating the delay so the delay uh, designing in 8051 is very very important because the amount of delay what we want to calculate those values we need to load into the th and uh, tl registers of the microcontroller so the initial value that that needs to be loaded into th and tl can be calculated as follows okay so first and foremost uh, we need the clock uh, frequency of the microcontroller as we all know that the microcontroller comes with the different uh, clock frequencies so for this uh, case let us assume that the clock, clock frequency is say 12 megahertz okay so with this 12 megahertz we need to calculate the timer clock input that is uh, 12 megahertz is the frequency divided by 12 that comes up to 1 megahertz so the clock input is 1 megahertz so with this 1 megahertz uh, we will calculate uh, the time taken for the timer to make each increment so it is as we all know that t is equal to 1 by f so it is 1 divided by 1 megahertz that gives us the time as 1 microsecond so this uh, time 1 microsecond is the time taken uh, for the timer to make one increment okay so please keep in mind uh, this value will change if the clock frequency is changed so all these calculations we are doing uh, with an assumption that the, the clock frequency is 12 megahertz so time uh, is coming up to one microsecond so for a time delay of x microsecond for example someone asks you to uh, induce a time delay of x microsecond okay so in that case the timer has to make x increments so the total uh, maximum number of counts possible in a microcontroller for a 16 bit timer is uh, calculated by 2 to the power of uh, 16 so 2 to the power of 16 will give us 65536 so this 65536 are the maximum number of counts that are possible in microcontroller okay so again uh, this number will change uh, if the timer bit changes right so it in this case it is 16 so 
2 to the power of 16 will give us 65,536. Okay. So uh, we have the two registers, TH and uh, TL. So we need to load the initial value in these two registers. So the TH be the value that has to be loaded to TH register and TL be the value that has to be loaded into TL register. So then what will be the value that will be loaded into TH and TL is nothing but the hexadecimal equivalent of the total number of counts that are possible. That means in this case, it is 65,536 minus X. Okay. So here X is the variable uh, that X value is known to us, right? Either it is 1000 microsecond or 2000 or 3000, it depends on us, right? How much amount of delay uh, we want. So it is 65,536 minus X, where 65,536 minus X is considered in decimal. These are the uh, decimal numbers. Okay. So whatever the value will come, that value uh, we need to convert into its hexadecimal equivalent and then we need to store. Uh, those two values into TH and uh, TL. Okay, so let us take an example. Uh, let us assume that the required delay will be uh, 1000 microsecond or it is 1 millisecond. Uh, in, in, in most of the time, the values may be given in millisecond or may be given in microsecond. So always we need to look into the microsecond value. So if the uh, required delay is 1000 microsecond, so in this case, X is 1000. So uh, 1000 is the delay we require. So the total number of counts, uh, which are possible with a 16 bit uh, counter timer is 65,536 minus X, where X is 1000. So if you subtract, uh, we'll get a value of 64,536. So this uh, 64,536 is in decimal value. So this we need to convert into its hexadecimal equivalent. As we all know that conversion from decimal to hexadecimal can be done by successively dividing by 16. Okay. So if you divide 64,536 successfully by 16, we'll get uh, value as FC and 1A. So this FC18 are nothing but TH and TL. Okay, so these are the initial values that needs to be loaded into TH and uh, TL registers. So that means uh, the TH should be loaded with FC and TL should be loaded with 18. Okay, so this is how we need to calculate uh, the uh, data that to be loaded into TH and uh, TL. Right. So uh, most importantly, what we require is um, the amount of delay that, that that is needed. And then we need to subtract that value from 65,536. And whatever uh, result we'll get, that uh, result should be converted into its hexadecimal equivalent. And then those 16-bit uh, number right, has to be loaded into TH and uh, TL. Okay, uh, please uh, you need to keep in mind that the 65,536 we got from 2 to the power of uh, 16. Okay, so let us have a look at how to uh, insert a delay taking the same, same example. Okay, so this is the delay program uh, with the previous example. Okay, so set the uh, timer 0 to mode 1. So move T mod comma hash of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. right so uh, basically uh, by loading uh, this value we are setting the timer 0 to mode 1 that is 16 bit this is 16 bit a uh, timer and then move th 0 with uh, hash of 0 fch and move tl 0 with hash of 0 18h uh, these two instructions are nothing but loading the whatever the values we got in the previous slide that is FC and 18 that is TH and TL right 
So it is TH and TL has been loaded with FC and ATIN. Please keep in mind, mind that TH0 and TL0 are the uh, TH and TL registers in timer 0. If we have a timer 1, then these will become TH1 and TL1. So once we load these uh, initial values in TH0 and TL0, then next uh, we need to set the uh, timer, timer 0. So set B TR0 is nothing but the start of the timer 0. And then once you start the timer, next question comes is uh, how many amount of time the timer has to be on. So uh, that is decided by next instruction that is JNB that is jump on not below TF0. So this TF0 is nothing but what until it becomes set that is until it is a rollover right. So the, the timer will start and then it will continue until this condition is satisfied. Okay. And once it is satisfied it will come out of the loop. So once it is done, uh, we need to clear TR0, that means we need to stop the timer 0 and then uh, we need to clear TF also, uh, clear the TFO flag. So uh, here uh, TFOs are nothing but the interrupts right? and TRO is nothing but the timer. So this is how we need to induce the required amount of delay in a program. So basically this program will induce the delay of uh, 1000 microsecond or 1 millisecond as, as uh, discussed in the uh, previous slide. That means uh, this program is nothing but to, uh, to generate the required amount of delay, delay that is 1000 microsecond. So if these uh, delay changes then obviously the value that are loaded in TH and TL will change and accordingly we need to make the modification. Okay. So in a whole program everything will remain constant except the values that are to be loaded in uh, TH and TN. Okay. So next uh, we'll move on to how to interface a simple switch and LED to the microcontroller. Okay. So before getting into the interfacing part, let us uh, have a brief discussion that right? So uh, the input and output devices are very, very important components of the embedded system, right? So as we know that embedded system has got four IO ports, that means four into eight, that is th total 32 IO ports, right? So in case of microcontroller, uh, the input and output devices are very important. And uh, in most of the cases, right, we cannot imagine any embedded system without uh, input and output devices. So uh, in this class, uh, we'll be basically discussing about the switch where switch acts as an input uh, device and LED which acts as an output device. Uh, we'll discuss a simple uh, basic example, how to interface the switch and LED, switch on the input side, LED on the output side. Okay. So, uh, brief about light emitting diode LED, right? So the LED has got the two LEDs, right? As you can see in the figure, uh, this light emitting diode has got two LEDs. One is anode, the other one is cathode. And then um, we may have a doubt that how to differentiate anode and then cathode. In, in most of the cases, uh, the anode and cathode can be differentiated with the help of a uh, length of the leads, right? So length of the uh, cathode leads are smaller than the length of the anode. So by looking at that, we can differentiate uh, which lead is anode and which one is cathode. And then a few more important uh, things we need to keep in mind, right? So don't connect uh, LED directly to the VCC, right? Because if you if you connect directly, then it is quite possible that the LED may burn out. So always it is advisable to connect the LED using the resistance, right? 
So it depends on the brightness. So if you need good brightness, then you can select the value of resistance between 100 to 150 ohm, right? And then for medium brightness, we can select about a resistance having a value of 300 ohm. So it is always advisable to connect the LED through the resistance. Okay. Then brief about the switch, right? So a switch is a basic input device, which is used to control the operation of any output device using the microcontroller or any other control unit. So basically, as we know that a switch breaks the electrical circuit and interrupts the flow of current, right? So uh, you can, you can uh, uh, compare this switch with the switch in your home, right? For on and off. Uh, of any any electrical device, maybe fan or tube light, right? So, in the in the in this case also, the electrical switch is basically used to uh, break the electrical circuit. So, in the circuit pull up and pull down register is used to convert in one infinite or uh, zero resistance into uh, digital signal because, as we all know that whenever we are talking about microprocessor or microcontroller we want the values in terms of zeros and ones so for that purpose we need to use pull up and pull down resistors we can interface the switch in two way but most important one need to remember the value of pull up and pull down resistors and it, it depends on the type of microcontroller we are using okay so the connection of electrical switch can be done in two ways, uh, either using positive logic or using uh, negative logic. So what is meant by positive logic? Is, uh, in a positive logic, uh, the pull down resistors are connected to the ground, whereas in negative logic, uh, the same resistor is connected to the uh, VCC. Right. So you can see from the figure uh, here, in case of positive logic, this pull down register is connected to the ground whereas in case of negative logic this pull up register is connected to uh, vcc so when we press the switch uh, the logic asserts high and when we disconnect the switch logic asserts low in positive logic whereas in negative logic when we press the switch the logic asserts low and then when we disconnect the switch logic asserts high. Basically, these are uh, the positive logic and negative logic are uh, exactly opposite to each other, right? So, exactly opposite to each other means what? When we are pressing the switch, uh, in case of positive logic, it is high, whereas in case of negative logic, for the same operation, it becomes low and then vice versa. Okay. So with this basic uh, information about the LED and then the electrical switch, let us look at the figure how to interface it, right? So the algorithm required to control the LED using the switch, right? See the microcontroller pin connected to the LED makes the output, whereas the microcontroller pin connected to the switch makes the input. And then we need to continuously monitor the status of a switch, right? So by pressing the switch, either the LED will make on and off, depending on which uh, logic we are using, positive logic or uh, negative logic. Okay. So this is how uh, we will be interfacing LED and switch to the 8051 microcontroller. So uh, this is 8051 microcontroller, right? So you can see that uh, we are connecting an LED on the output side through a resistor, right, to the port two, that is 2.1. Whereas on the input side, uh, we are connecting a switch to port 1.1. And please keep in mind that this uh, switch is connected to the VCC using a register, pull up register, right. So depending on uh, when the switch is pressed, right, either the LED will be on and off. So this is how uh, we need to interface the LED and switch to the microcontroller. Okay. 
So if you want to make it a sample program uh, that we have written in a C, so hash include reg51 dot header. This is the header file. Then s bit LED is given by to the port 2.1, whereas s bit switch is connected to port 1.1. Right. So this two one and one and one is shown here. Right. This is um, this is connected to 2.1 and switch is connected to 1.1 so those are mentioned here where exactly the switch and led are connected to which port and to which pin right then integer main start right led is zero configure uh, as output pin then switch is equal to one configuring uh, switch as an input pin right so let us have a condition while one right that means you continuously monitor the status of a switch if switch is equal to zero if its value is zero then led is on else led will be off right uh, this will change if you change the uh, logic right positive logic and then a negative logic right you can see that here uh, the pull up register is connected to vcc if you connect pull up register to uh, VCC, right, as we have discussed, right. So this is a negative logic, right. So in a negative logic, when uh, when a switch is pressed, we'll get zero, right. So when switch is zero, logic is LED is on, else it is zero. So if you change the uh, logic from negative to positive, then we'll get the different result. So this is how we need to write a sample program for interfacing LED or LED and switch to the microcontroller. Okay, so the summary of today's discussion is what uh, we have discussed uh, how to calculate the delay, right? Uh, basically the delay we have calculated depending on the parameter which are given to us, the First and foremost parameter we know is the clock frequency of the microcontroller. That is, in this case, we have assumed it is to be 12 megahertz, right? So, you, taking that 12 megahertz, uh, we have calculated 12 megahertz by 12. That is, we got 1 megahertz, and with that 1 megahertz, we have calculated the t. t is equal to 1 by f. That comes up to 1 by 12 megahertz. That is. One microsecond, right? And then with those values, we have calculated the right. We have calculated the uh, the total number of counts which are possible. That is given by two to the power of sixteen, right? So two to the power of sixteen will give us sixty-five thousand five thirty-six, right? And x is the amount of delay which we want that needs to be subtracted from 65,536. So whatever value we will get that we need to convert into its hexadecimal equivalent. And those values we need to load into TH and TN. Once you are done with these calculations, right, you can write the program for delay. So first we need to set the timer zero to mode one for section bit timer. And then we need to load the values uh, what we got into TH and TL and then start the timer and then uh, keep that timer until uh, condition is satisfied, right? And then once it is done, you need to clear uh, timer and then the interrupt flag. And then uh, we also discussed the interfacing of uh, switch and uh, LED to the microcontroller. Uh, briefly, we have discussed uh, LED light emitting diode has got the two LEDs anode and cathode, and then we have discussed switch. Then we have discussed the two logics positive logic and negative logic with the help of pull down and pull up registers. And then also, uh, we have written a simple program wherein uh, we have interfaced switch and LED switch on input side, LED on the output side. So, this is the end of uh, module three. Okay. So 
I hope you have followed this. Uh, some of the questions uh, from this uh, module three, uh, we can go through this, right? Uh, with diagrammatical representation, explain how stacks plays its role in subroutine operations, right? Uh, then write an assembly language programs to sort an array of n is equal to five bytes of data in ascending order, right? Or maybe in descending order. Then write an assembly language program to count the number of ones and zeros in a given number, right? And then store those numbers, counts of ones and zeros in 30 and 31 apps. Write a note on subroutine instructions, right? And these subroutine instructions we have discussed as call instruction and then return instruction, right? Again, call instructions we have, dis uh, we have discussed two absolute call and then short call. And then uh, explain push and pop instruction with the help of an example, right? As we all know that uh, push and pop instructions are very, very important whenever we are using stacks. Then write an assembly language program to find a factorial of a given number. Uh, then write an assembly language program to find average of 10 numbers, right? So uh, 10 students mark stored in external memory and load average value in internal and RAM memory. So uh, these are the few few sample questions which may appear from from module three. And to conclude, <coughs> let us have a look at uh, few uh, multiple choice questions. Right. Uh, look at first question: How does the processor respond? To an occurrence of the interrupt, right? So there are four options are given here. One is by interrupt service subroutine, by interrupt status subroutine, by interrupt structure subroutine, or by interrupt system subroutine. Uh, basically, this question is what uh, whenever whenever there is an interrupt to the microcontroller, right? Uh, how it responds? Right, so as we all know that uh, this is nothing but a interrupt service subroutine, right? So known as what ISS, right? All the four options uh, are ISS only, but a correct answer is it is a service, interrupt service subroutine. Uh, next question is which address or location in the program memory is supposed to get occupied when the CPU jumps and execute instantaneously during the occurrence of an uh, interrupt, right? So whenever whenever there is an interrupt, right? So uh, from which address the program memory is supposed, right? So options are scalar, vector, register, or all of the above. The correct answer here is vector. Next question is which location specify the storage or loading of vector address during the interrupt generation either it is stack pointer or program counter or data pointer or all of the above right so as we studied that whenever there is an interrupt right uh, the address which is to be executed next will be stored in a program counter so answer is program counter next is what kind of triggering configuration of external interrupt intimate the signal to stay low until the generation of subsequent interrupt is edge triggering or level triggering or both or none so it is a level triggering right by use of level triggering right the external interrupt intimate the signals to stay low and then what is the counting rate of a machine cycle in correlation to the oscillator frequency for timers whether it is 1 by 10 or 1 by 12 or 1 by 15 or 1 by 20 right? uh, this is basically depends on the frequency of a microcontroller in most of the cases it is 12 megahertz so correct answer is here b 1 by 12 then 
which register holds the address for a stack whose value is supposed to be directed at the topmost position okay the stack pointer or stack registers or both a and b or none of the above right which register holds the address for a stack whose value is supposed to be directed at the topmost position so it is stack pointer what is the another name of memory stack especially given for the fundamental function performed by it it's lifo or filo or fifo or lilo lifo is what last in first out filo is first in last out fifo is first in first out lilo is last in last out as as we all know that in case of uh, stack it is last in first out because the data which we are storing into star will be at the bottom so it is last in first out what does the last instruction of each subroutine that transfer the control to the instruction in the calling program with temporary address storage called as right so jump to subroutine branch to subroutine return from subroutine or call subroutine so basically this question is what does the last instruction of each subroutine as we all know that subroutine is nothing but a set of instructions written separately and whenever we call the program will shift from main program to the subroutine it will execute the instructions which are there at the subroutine and then whenever it looks at the last instruction right last instruction is always written instruction so once it execute that instruction it will return from the subroutine so the correct answer is c that is written from the subroutine so these are the some uh, multiple choice questions uh, from the module 3 right so the outcome of this module 3 right if you want to have a look at this right so module 3 basically uh, we have discussed about uh, two important things one is the stack the other one is the subroutine right so to summarize module 3 so the learning outcome of this uh, module 3 right uh, uh, we have understood the operation of uh, stack in 8051 how it operates uh, we have understood the functioning of subroutine right what is meant by subroutine why they are required and then using which instruction uh, the subroutine can be accessed we also understood the operation of two important uh, instruction that is push and pop instruction right we also familiarized with uh, assembly language program for subroutines and finally we have understood the interfacing switch and led to io ports of 8051 microcontroller right so quickly go through what we have discussed in the module 3 right so we have discussed about stack pointer right uh, stack pointer is a section of ram used by cpu right to store information temporarily right uh, we also discussed that uh, whenever stack pointer is it is 8 bit that means the values will be from 00 to ff whenever 8051 is powered up the default value is 07 Right. therefore zero it is the first location of a stack these are the two important instructions push and pop which are needed to be used for accessing uh, or to do with the stack right. with example we have discussed push and pop operation right this we have discussed push and pop right then uh, we have discussed what is meant by subroutine right and how they operate right whenever there is a call instruction uh, from main program we will jump to the subroutine 
do the execution here. Once executions are done, then come back to the main program using the return instruction. Right, the instructions which are used in the subroutine are uh, call instruction. There are two types of call instruction, long call and absolute call. Right, this we have discussed and then return is the instruction by which we can come back to the main program. Uh, uh, please keep in mind that in case of all these instructions, no flags are affected. Then uh, we have discussed some, some uh, programs uh, like a data transfer from one memory location to the another memory location, right? Then uh, counting number of ones and zeros in a given data. Then finding sum and average of the given numbers. Then finding the largest and the smallest number. Arranging the numbers in ascending and descending order. Then finding the factorial of a given number. Then arranging the numbers or finding the Fibonacci series. Right. So these are the things we have discussed apart from what we have discussed in today's class that is calculating the delay and writing the program for delays, then interfacing of switch and LED. Right. So these are all the things uh, which we have discussed in model three. Uh, as far as the programs are concerned, right, uh, intensely in, in some of the programs I have inserted the some redundant instructions, right. So I kindly request to all the students to execute these programs as it is and look at the outputs, whether you are getting it or not, and then try to remove those uh, redundant instructions and execute it. That means for removing those redundant instructions, you should be able to find out uh, those redundant instructions, whether they are required or not required. And then if they are not required, remove them and then execute the program once again and then see the result. So by this trial and error method, you can you can become perfect in the programming part. But as we all know that uh, for programming, we must know the logic that if someone asks you to arrange the numbers in ascending order, right? if someone asks you to find the Fibonacci series, someone asks you to find the factorial of a given number, if someone asks you to find LCM or GCF of the numbers, first we should know what is meant by LCM, what is meant by GCF. Right? This is all we have learned in the uh, primary or higher primary classes, but we have forgotten that. So we must know those. Uh, basics. Once you know the basics, uh, we should know how to uh, write programs using any any programming language, not only microcontroller or for that factor. Any you can use any programming language. Okay. Right. We'll conclude here. Thank you.